where we live, it's 20 to 30 minutes to Fresno or 20 minutes up to Oakhurst. So the kids cannot walk to school. They can't walk to the movies. They, you know, they pretty much have to drive wherever they go. These roads are, are, are different because it's not like you're in a city where you have three lanes and three lanes. You know, to get to the closest little market is three miles from our house. They're windy, curvy, up and down roads and um, not the easiest roads to get around on. Brahim was very much into skateboarding with his friends, finding places and trying to do tricks and grinding and, um, you know, went through Vans tennis shoes like, you know, every month he needed new shoes because they were worn out. He uh, enjoyed skateboarding and music. Yes, he played the bass and he loved to skateboard and he was doing very well at the bass actually. He always loved music, but he got more interested in it when we moved over here. We had a private teacher that he used to go to teach him bass guitar. That's what he used to love. He was a friend of my, um, my nephew. He wanted uh, bass lessons, and so he became a regular student of mine. This became his passion. I mean, he loved it. He practiced all the time. Some of his friends joined a band, and I think they had talked before about joining a band and there were no bass players, so Brahim said, yeah, I can do that. It's, you know, not the typical, everybody wants to be a drummer or a guitar player, but he'll be the bass player. You know, they call them those back garage kind of bands, and he used to have his own friends. They used to practice all the time, either here or some other places, you know, at other people's uh, garages, and uh, they all had a good time. He loved being in the band with the other guys, and it was a good connection for them. First time I met Brahim was the uh, first band practice we ever had. We started a band and then I met him first. First band practice, yeah. At one point we had a show a good like every week, like down Fresno and locally in Oakhurst up here. As we got like deeper into the genres of punk and ska. Raheem was into um, punk, this is his, was his favorite, and um, they were the, actually the, the more musical band of, of the three or four bands they play with. I hopefully tried to teach him how to hear something if he um, heard uh, a song and be able to, to try to help him figure it out. With those kind of songs, um, the, there are a lot more attitude. And Brahim was very much um, rooting for the underdog and wanted people to speak up. And he celebrated people's differences. And so he was kind of an ambassador in some ways for his home country, Lebanon. Um, he was very proud of being Lebanese and um, wanted people to know that what life was like in Lebanon and set the story straight for a lot of them that you know they don't ride camels and have oil wells in their backyard and it's not a desert, it's you know Mediterranean. He wanted respect and justice for everybody, no matter who he is, who she is, color, race, whatever. Overall, he's he's a pretty loving guy. Like even though he didn't want to show it most of the time, because he's because we were all punk rockers, you know, he cared for everybody. They were doing CPR, and it's kind of a blur. I mean, I remember ambulances, fire truck, lots of people, but I couldn't tell you who was there. But I just found Brahim, and I just stood there saying, come on, come back, come back. They kept telling me, back up, you gotta back up. But I didn't, I stood right there, and I heard him say, time of death. And I just freaked out. I kept telling him, don't quit. There's still a chance, don't quit. But they said they'd been doing it long enough that there was no chance. And I just was screaming, no, don't quit. 
I was told when I was at the school that he had been in the car with several friends and that perhaps there had not been um, enough seat belts. But it wasn't until we actually got the police report that we'd known that the boy had had a traffic violation two days before that for the same thing of carrying youth in his car and, and no seat belts. We um, still have his cell phone connected because we call it every once in a while just to hear his voice. So we don't forget. The message still hasn't sunken in. Kids who think, we're just going up the road. Nothing's gonna happen. I lost a child. My daughter has lost one of her very dearest friends, her big brother. There's a, a gap in our family. Um, we feel his presence, but it's not him.